Hey, I'm Lana. And I'm Casey. And this is Teddy. And we are Class C Broads. In this episode, we are at Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota. We're gonna tell you all about it, as well as some local beer and baseball. This is all about America, baby. America. The first thing you need to know about Theodore Roosevelt National Park is that it is very big. There is a north unit, an Elkhorn Ranch unit, and a south unit. And the north and the south units are about 70 miles apart. And in some respects, there's kind of a fourth unit to the park. That's the Painted Canyon Visitor Center area. And I say that because you can get to that portion of the park. It's right by the highway, but you don't have to pay an entrance fee or have a National Parks Pass to visit the Painted Canyon area. And so if you're short on time or you're just cheap, and you don't want to pay the fee, that's a great place to get an idea for what the park is really like. And speaking of cheap, you can actually boondock there overnight. And that's where we started our exploration of the park by going to the Overlook and then doing the nature hike. variation in the soil. Huh. Painted Canyon. So we're about three quarters of the way through the Painted Canyon Trail. <clears throat> we're huffing and puffing a little bit because, you know. Come back up. Yeah. But if you're here, do it. It's about 0.9 miles overall and it'll take you through, you know, just not the rock formations, but this like really interesting foresty area. And it's the middle of July, end of July actually, and there's still all sorts of summer flowers in bloom. So that's a nice treat. It's it's a nice contrast. I mean, you have cacti, you have um, pine trees, and you have a lot of scruff, and then there's moss. I mean, it's it's so varied in the landscape. We it's can we can awesome. certainly see why Teddy loved this area. Go Teddy. We got one, thank you. All right, have a good day, guys. Oh, we'll oh, take that. We'll take the paper. Sure, that one has best because it has our road closure reflected in it. Awesome. All right, thank Make you. Sure your up to the left. Other than that, stay on this road to go through the park. Thank you. Have a good day. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you're interested, our 17 minute park film, Refuge of American Spirit, is beginning right now in the theater. The South Unit tells the story of Theodore Roosevelt, America's 26th president. Born in New York City to wealthy parents, Roosevelt struggled as a child with ill health such that he soon became an advocate of the so-called strenuous life. While hunting bison in the Dakota Territory in 1883, Roosevelt fell in love with the Badlands near the Little Missouri River for its harsh beauty and rugged lifestyle. He built the Maltese Cross Ranch, now at the South Unit Visitor Center, a few miles south of Medora, but returned to New York pursue his political career. When his wife gave birth to a daughter on February 12, 1884, all was going well for Roosevelt. But then just two days later, the unthinkable happened. Both his wife and mother died on the same day. Roosevelt sought solace once again in the badlands of North Dakota. That summer, he started building another ranch named Elkhorn about 35 miles north of Medora. He also wrote extensively about his adventures. 
After a severe winter in 1886 through 87 caused most of his cattle to starve, he returned to the East Coast to pursue politics. His pursuit of conservation policies as the 26th President of the United States was influenced by his time in North Dakota. I never would have been president if it had not have been for my experiences in North Dakota, he wrote. The South Unit has a scenic loop that's around 36 miles long and it has, you know, pullouts along the way so you can take a look at all the pretty things. Uh, the first place that we stopped was Skyline Vista and we did a little hike there. Yeah, it was really little, like 0.2 miles. The next place that we pulled over was around the Cottonwood Campground. We saw what we thought were wild horses. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. We're gonna pretend they were wild horses. One of the things that we wanted to do was see the Little Missouri River, the Little Mo, as we like to call it, since we hail from Missouri. And we got our first chance to see the river at the Peaceful Valley Ranch. We decided to do a little hike there down to the river. Again, another little hike. Hey, it was longer than the skyline. It's like Vista. twice as long. <laughs> We're here, and we're gonna take this Ekblom Trail all the way to here, uh, about a quarter mile or so, to see the Little Missouri River, the Little Mo. I'm not sure I can make it that far. Job. We just took the Ekblom Trail about, I don't know, a quarter mile or so to see the Little Missouri, Little Mo. Not the Mighty Mo, Little Mo. Little. That's all I wanted to say. I think we saw Little Sebastian as well. We were out too. I don't, we did see horses, but we did not see Little Sebastian. Because if we did, he would have been resurrected from the dead. <laughs> So, bye, bye, bye little Sebastian. Sebastian. Miss you in the greatest fashion. Bye, bye, little Sebastian. We got another chance to see the little Mo, but this time from up above when we took the Wind Canyon Trail, which was another long one, 0.4 miles. Whew, man, we're getting tired at this point. <laughs> See a lot with a little hike. Little meaning under a mile. You know, we were famished from all these long hikes, so we decided to take another short hike of about 0.3 miles on the Boycourt Trail to have a little picnic lunch. And guess who joined us? Teddy Roosevelt himself. More on that later. It's amazing. Buck Hill, which is the highest point that you can actually get to in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And it is a climb straight uphill, 0.2 miles to get here, but it's worth it. You recover. Going down is pretty easy. I think the most interesting or informative trail that we went on was the Colvane Trail. At 
the trailhead, there's a trail map with um, some little numbering of spots that you should stop on the trail and kind of read what they have to say. And it was interesting or informative to me because in 1951, there was a lightning strike that caused the Colvane fire that lasted 26 years. And tourist visitors would come there to actually watch the coal burn. And it could be anything from wisps of smoke to red hot embers of burning coal that people would see over these decades. Yeah, like during that time, the earth, the, the formations changed and, you know, rock would crumble and plants would just die because it was so hot. Yeah, but Mother Nature always finds a way. So if you know anything about me at all, you know that I love prairie dogs. You love them too, don't you, Casey? Yeah, they're cute. I like them so much, I even wrote a song about them. But here at Teddy Roosevelt National Park, we hit ouch, a trail with some great horse flies <laughs> and uh, prairie dogs that go right through the middle of the trail. I mean, they're literally, you have to dodge their holes. Yeah. So it's a prairie dog town, but they don't have any good prairie dog zoning ordinances because basically they build anywhere, just like it's the old Wild Wild West. But uh, if you're a prairie dog fan at all, take the trail to the old eastern entrance and you will encounter the prairie dog metropolis. So for today, our tour of Theodore Roosevelt National Park is going to end. We are at the Badlands Overlook and the rest of the scenic loop is closed to traffic. So we're going to turn around and head back to where we started. Pro tip, watch the horse flies. They will get you. Yeah, little bastards. Oh, you can't say that on TV. It's YouTube. So we needed to figure out where we wanted to stay during our visit to Teddy Roosevelt National Park. We ended up picking a campground called The Crossings located in Belfield, North Dakota. It's about 25 minutes or so to the south unit entrance at Medora and less than an hour to the north unit entrance. And so it's really kind of between the two major entrances to the park. So we thought that would be a good fit. The Crossings Campground is a pretty bare bones campground. There's a gravel loop around the campground. All of the sides are grass, really weeds, and there isn't any sort of camp host here. So if there would be a problem, we would have to contact them online or give them a call. In addition, there aren't any sort of shower houses, no bathrooms other than what you've got in your RV, but it's really been great for us. There are full hookups here. The sites are relatively level. And I think the best part of all is that there really haven't been that many campers here. Maybe a half dozen to 10 or so other campers during our stay. And that's great because we really like not being around people and it does have a feel like you're, you know, sort of out in the country. In addition, it's about 25 minutes or so to a town called Dickinson, where there's a lot more going on, like the Badlands Big Sticks baseball team. Yeah, we didn't know anything about this baseball team. We were just looking for something to do, and I was a little hesitant, but then Lana said that there was a free giveaway, and it was a bobblehead. Of Teddy Roosevelt, no doubt. How who, cool is that? Yeah, who doesn't want a free bobblehead, right? And Teddy, to boot. So we went to the game, and we were pleasantly surprised. The league is a bunch of college kids. It's called the Independent League. 
and it was a really good experience. Uh, the stadium was nice. They had good food. They had cheap beer. They even had a half hour happy hour where we got our first taste of the pronghorn peach from Fat Fish Brewing. Fat Fish Brewing. Tickets were only 13 bucks a person for seats right behind home plate. Yeah. yeah. I think the best part about the team and leagues like this are the relationships that they have with the fans. I mean, they had the little kids warming up with the players. They had them leading the players out on the, the field, you know, when the lineup was being called. It was just a great fan experience overall. Yeah, I'm glad we went. It was a really good time. Do you remember how Casey said that Theodore Roosevelt National Park is really sprawling and big? Well, that's true in the South Unit as well, because if you want to see this area of the park in the South Unit called the Petrified Tree Area, you've got to drive about 10 miles or so from N Medora up to an area on some country roads. This is the hike we're gonna do today. We're at this parking lot and we're gonna take this little trail here and hopefully see some petrified forest. If we wanted to keep going, we could obviously do lots of trails, but we're lazy, so we're just gonna stop right there. way to see the petrified forest but it's pretty much grassland right now we walked through some boulder formations and it was uphill a little bit but now we're smooth sailing through the grasslands and teddy's guiding us oh boy <laughs> we have an inanimate object with no gps guiding us well sometimes he gives better directions than you oh burn don't burn out here. Wildfires are at high <laughs> level, so. It really wasn't a forest, was it? We got so excited there. But look at all the conies. So we just got to the petrified tree area of Teddy Roosevelt National Park and we took the south loop. Um, it looks like it's supposed to be about 2.3 miles overall, but it's about 1.6 miles from the parking lot to where you actually get to see the petrified trees. And it is really pretty cool. Um, easy hike flat there's a little scrub that you got to go through so you might want to wear pants if you don't like touching outdoorsy stuff with your legs yeah but easy hike and really worth it so she says easy but there are some parts where you have to climb a little bit so 
you'll have to catch your breath, but once you get past that part, it's pretty much plains. Yeah, it's not like there are any stairs or boulders that you have to climb, though. Correct. So what do you think of the trees, Casey? I think that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, like we were talking to a lady earlier, and if you didn't know better, you'd just think it was some kind of a weird rock that shears off in that formation. But no, it's a tree that turned into a rock because it got so scared. <laughs> Well, how else does it happen? That's true. True story. It's not how it happens. How's it happen? Well, I think the heat and the pressure build up so much that I'm going to have to read about it later on <laughs> and explain it to the people. Well, the people should just know that they got so scared that they're still to this day petrified. Mm -hmm. We're petrified of the petrified trees. Ready? Go. Sometimes when a forest is buried by a flood or volcanic ash, there isn't enough oxygen around for the tree to decompose like it regularly would. Groundwater moving through the silica-rich volcanic ash slowly replaces the organic compounds inside the trunks with quartz. This ends up being a petrified tree. Teddy Roosevelt National Park is home to the third highest concentration of petrified wood in the United States. Look at how white and glistening that is right in there. Come look at it, Casey. I'm not seeing the gliss. Oh, okay. See. Now I see. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Depending on what time of year, there's some beautiful flowers and some cacti and some grasshoppers. So watch out, they'll get in your eyes. No gators though, right? Grass gators. There were probably gators here at one point in time. Oh, I'm sure it was a big ocean or mm -hmm. something. So one thing we should mention, we're here on a Sunday in July and we're almost ready to wrap up the trail and we haven't seen anybody else on it. So it's a very untraversed little hike out here. And it's uh, around 10.15. So we didn't get here super early or anything. We're at Fat Fish Brewing, which is in Dickinson, North Dakota, probably about 40 minutes or so from Teddy Roosevelt National Park, about 20 minutes or so from our campground. This is the only brewery around, but so far, so good. It's also a harvest host, so if you are in your RV and are in the area, this might be a great stop for you. So, cheers. Casey? Cheers. We've got this one. Thank, Thank you. you.
The north unit has an out and back 14 mile scenic drive, about 28 miles total. And we're at our first stop, which is the Cannibal Concretions. Nobody knows how these concretions are formed. And they are just otherworldly. It's just like somebody dropped a bunch of marbles or something and they just stayed. They're just these huge balls of rock that are, some of them are almost perfectly round. It's just very interesting. I, I don't know, it's magic. God's marble game. Yeah, that's what, that's what it was, mm -hmm. pretty sure. Like right here you can tell it's just it's sand and it comes off on your fingers and stuff it's 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 natural sandpaper I'm getting my nails done here I'm getting my cuticles maybe I should put my feet on there true story So the first hike that we're gonna do in the north unit is the Little Missouri Nature Trail, otherwise known as Little Mo. So everywhere we go, whether it's Badlands, I say there's gonna be, we're gonna see gators. And you prove my point. We saw gators in North Dakota. <laughs> go gators! <laughs> awesome. So the entire time that we've been in North Dakota, it has smelled amazing. And I think it's because of this silver sagebrush, which smells like sage. And we didn't know what it was until we got on the Little Mo Nature Trail. And there's this handy dandy little booklet. And it pointed out the silver sagebrush for us. Woo -woo. We're off the Little Missouri Nature Trail. Because Casey, Casey sees a buffalo that she wants to go chase. We are on the extended loop of the Little Mo Trail and we came up to this little bluff and we were surprised, not surprised really, but there are a bunch of buffalo down in the valley and they are very talkative today. <laughs> that That's was a just pig. Atlanta. That's a pig. That's not a buffalo. <laughs> it's close, right? Um, it's very peaceful here. It's around 1045 on a Monday. And we've only encountered one other person on the trail. It's nice, like 75 degrees out with a little bit of breeze. And we're just hanging with the bison. Getting ready to get a drink out of a little mo. You're getting a drink out of a little mo? No, I'm not. We didn't bring our fancy straw. <laughs> Excuse you. Yeah, just to listen to him. Look at the little red dog walking with his mama. And of course, just up the road, we saw some more buffalo. So, I'm in the car, and, uh, yep. I think we just caused them to turn around. They're not turning around. Now. 
So we're starting the uh, Caprock Cooley Prairie Dog Nature Trail. So we are on the Buckhorn Trail and we think we just got to the start of the Prairie Dog Town. So if you know me, you know I'm super excited because I love Prairie Dogs. So I'm telling you, there's nothing better than watching these little guys hop up and down, scurry around, eat their grass, poop, because you know they poop. I could spend hours, I mean hours, out yes, here. Yes, she could, but I will not let her. So if you're into prairie dogs, like I am, come on out. This is it. We're at the end of the trail in the north unit and that is going to wrap up our time at Theodore Roosevelt National Park. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That would really help us out. And remember, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay classy. Cheers! Oh look, a parking spot. There's a bathroom right there. Oh, okay. Wanna go? Yep. Little Mo Nature Trail, nature calls on the nature trail. They pop up, but they dart down to make strange chirping sounds. They scurry from man to man when they're little prairie dog town. You're just surrounded by all of the slug rocks. Slug? Slug. I, I think that's slough. Slough? Slough rocks? I don't know. I can't remember. I read it earlier. Listen to that dragonfly, too. That's a grasshopper. Grasshopper.